Mark is who he is. With journalists, mechanics or fans, the Australian's relaxed, approachable and has no secrets at all. Uh, I think that basically you know everything about me. The whole world knows everything about me, so there's nothing else they don't know. A transparent star bathed in the spotlight of the media. That's often the price a celebrity pays. Weber's childhood, by contrast, was not so spectacular. A boy like any other who also had normal problems at school, even if today he prefers to skate over them. The teachers absolutely loved me. I think the teachers thought I was fantastic. And I, I always behaved myself and uh, I did nothing wrong and uh, I never missed a day of school and uh, I was really a fantastic student for the teachers to, uh, to a, a great role model for the young, for the other kids. Though it's him saying it, he has to laugh himself. A real rascal, this Mark Webber, a man who's established himself in the innovative and fast-living world of Formula One. In stark contrast to his love for the motor racing era of the 60s and 70s. Uh, the racing was quite dangerous and uh, the cars were, the driver could make more of a difference than against the car. So uh, I would like to have probably raced in that era and uh, I'm not big on all the modern gadgets, you know, all the internet, all the this and that and iPods and blah blah blah. I'd much prefer the old fashioned stuff and uh, the old truck and just drive uh, simple things. I don't like the modern stuff now. Mark Webber, a somewhat different racing driver, unconventional but fast. He's like the nice neighbor next door, a man like his country, endearing and attractive. Speaking now exclusively about his new car, it's the seven-time world champion. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here right now to present you our 2010 model and I'd like to go into details a little bit of what is different to when I stopped and to what we have now. And one of the most significant difference is the front wing. If you look at the front wing, in particular this part here, we can change the angle of this part on both sides obviously and it's up to six degrees that you be able to alter the front wing up or down, up to your liking. But you can only do it once a lap, that you choose a setting up or down for a specific corner, but it's unfortunately not possible for each corner. After this one we go a stage back and we look at the front tyre. And the front tyre this year is a much narrower tyre. And the reason of this one is they want to reduce corner speeds and sm making the front tyre smaller, less contact patch, less grip. But at the same time, more critical. Cars are more heavy, we have a lot more fuel in the cars now. So tires are a lot more critical issue, particularly with the narrow front. Then we obviously have uh, a very small rear wing that in my days uh, was a little bit wider and sort of uh, more attractive. You get used to it by, by some time that it is what it is and it's obviously producing lots of uh, downforce, in particular with all the aerodynamic features underneath the, the rear wing. And that is the floor with the so-called diffuser, which is now a double diffuser. It was a big topic last year. Everybody has it now. Everybody has a much more redefined uh, version of this one and naturally a much higher performance. Then we come to the heart of the, of the car, and that is underneath here, that is our engine. The Mercedes engine is probably, or if not, the best engine in the field. The lowest emission and uh, fuel consumption with the highest power, and even more important, the best drivability. And therefore, I think we have a pretty good package, and I hope you all cross the fingers for our season. Thank you. After the break, we're back with the key facts on the Australian Grand Prix. Plus, presentations from a different perspective. Don't go away. To Inside Grand Prix. Coming up, the final news ahead of the second race in Melbourne. And now, how car presentations differ. Inside Grand Prix, behind the scenes. A look back and bulbs flash at the first media events of the year. From London to Stuttgart, preparations are being made for the team presentations, which could hardly be more contrasting. English cool, for example, meets Italian elegance, or 
German tradition. Three team presentations that are unique in their own way. Welcome to what's probably the most popular press conference ever to have been held in the Mercedes-Benz Museum. At Mercedes GP, the presentation is a superlative media spectacle. The traditional car makers world premiere in their own elegant Mercedes-Benz Museum. If we'd wanted to provide a seat for everyone who wanted to be here today, we'd probably have had to go to the football stadium across the road. By contrast, a club atmosphere with strumming electric guitars in London, the new Virgin Racing team launches in unconventional, almost informal style. The industrious Richard Branson dashes in between appointments to the Virgin Premier. I love new challenges um, and I love supporting, uh, supporting new companies and um, you know last week we, we were fortunate enough to be unveiling our spaceship uh, and uh, you know this week we're fortunate enough to be unveiling a new Formula One team. Um, you know together you know they've created something like, like 2,000 jobs and, uh, and, 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 um, uh, and, and both are very challenging projects but we just love challenging projects. A stylish ambience in Maranello. The Italian's red goddess is presented with simple elegance. Italian understatement. Now that the golden Schumacher era at Ferrari is finally over. The record world champion, meanwhile, enjoys informal backstage small talk with other celebrities who want to know just one thing. Will Schumacher be competitive? He's clever enough to know how you need to drive to win the championship. It won't be easy, but I'm nevertheless quite sure that he has every chance to become world champion once again and to prove to everyone again that he really is the best in the world. Michael Schumacher. Few have dominated their sport like the German. The prodigal son going back after 20 years as seven times world champion to where it all began, to Mercedes. It doesn't get any better. Well, I think this is a, a fantastic story for Formula One and motorsport. You know, Mercedes-Benz have for many years now supported Formula One, you know, DTM, Formula Three with the young drivers, but they've never had their own team in Grand Prix racing. And then to have the chance to take over what was the Braun Grand Prix team, to do it at a time when Michael Schumacher decides he wants to come back to Formula One and with another great teammate in Nico Rosberg, I, I don't think there's any bigger story in motorsports this year. The prestigious German car makers celebrate their recruitment of the former world champion in their own Mercedes Museum. Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher are now practically Germany's national Formula One team. We all hoped and dreamt a bit that this might happen, and I find it hard to imagine all the work that Norbert Haug's put in over the past few months, as it wasn't always good news coming out via F1. So to then make a step like this and to top it by signing up Michael Schumacher is fantastic. I think we therefore need to take our hats off to Norbert and say thank you for pulling it off, not just for Mercedes, but for F1 as well. It's as if he'd never been away. King Michael, confident, composed and focused. Like a Swiss watch, the former champion breezes through the Mercedes GP presentation and photo shoot with stoic calm. All I can say really is that I feel extremely comfortable at the moment with my decision and with everything that lies ahead. I feel like a youngster again. If they awarded a title for PR hype, it would go to Mercedes GP. The Ferraristi would get the prize for enduring elegance. And the medal for simplicity would go to Virgin Racing. On the track, however, it's him that everyone wants to beat. And now, a legend celebrates a major birthday.